Praise the Lord, and thank you for joining us here at Bethlehem Temple Church, Los Angeles, for the Hour of Power. We want to remember and thank God for our leaders, Suffragan Bishop Gentry Richardson, Jr., and First Lady Evangelist Denise Richardson. Thank God for them. Well, we want to go to the Word, and we're going to start with an appetizer, amen, that the Lord gave me as I stood waiting for the main course. Uh, waiting for him to give me what he wanted to share uh, with the people of God and uh, on this evening. And so our appetizer is out of Psalm 147, verses 15 through 18. And the Bible says, He sendeth forth his commandments upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoar frost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth the wind to blow and the waters flow. And as I study our appetizer, I saw that verse 15 says, he sends. Verse 16 says, he gives. Verse 17 says, he casts forth. Verse 18 he sends out his word and causes the wind to blow and the waters to flow. And so I've been standing on uh, verse 17 that says, He casted forth his ice like morsels, like morsels of meat, a tasty de delicacy that is delightful and extremely pleasing. And so I've been saying and praying, Lord, we thank you for a delicious word. Hallelujah. Thank you for the morsel, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Send your word, O oh God. And God in his faithfulness did just that. And so um, the main course, this morsel that he has cast forth is out of Isaiah chapter 65, verse 16. And the King James Version, it reads, That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hid from my eyes. And, and the, um, the version of this that really ministered to my spirit is out of the Amplified Classic Version. Same passage of scripture, Isaiah 65 and 16. It should be on the screen. And the word of the Lord says, so it shall be that he who invokes a blessing on himself in the land shall do so by saying, May the God of truth and fidelity, the Amen, bless me. And he who takes an oath in the land shall swear by the God of truth and faithfulness to his promises, the Amen, because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hidden from my eyes. And so I'd like to char charge you this afternoon to invoke a blessing. Amen. Invoke a blessing. We're early in the new year. We're in, in 2021, bless God. And um, many times, you know, when, when a new year is first starting out, there's a lot of anticipation and we're excited about what's coming next and the more and, and just, you know, doing better, being better. That, that usually accom accompanies uh, the beginning of a new year. So today's morsel of scripture says, if you stand in need of a blessing, then you must invoke a blessing on yourself. It's up to you. The word is, is nigh you. It's even in your mouth. Well, how do we do that? Well, as I study, I learned that when a child of God invokes, he or she is petitioning God for support. So we're speaking of a prayer of petition where one goes to God and he or she uh, calls on God to make an earnest request. So when we come to God and petition, we're asking him to do something either for ourselves or for others. A prayer petition is where you go to the written word of God, you find scriptures that apply to your situation, your circumstance, and you make those scriptures the foundation of your petition. Holy Scripture supports your request of the Lord who is so faithful to his word. Amen. And all of this is as, Ho as Holy Spirit leads. Glory to God. And so the Lord has cast forth a specific prayer of a blessing on this afternoon or this evening out of his word that we want to take a look at and parse out. Um, and that 
prayer blessing is, may the God of truth and fidelity, the amen, bless me. So one thing I see um, is that bless in our passage of scripture is, is a barach, which means blessing God in adoration. It is a blessing to God when his children adore him. Adoration. Adoration is the deep love, honor, worship, and respect paid to one that we revere. We reverence God. He's our Father in heaven. Amen. And he's so good that out of the pleasure of adoration and being in his presence, we get blessed in return. We adore and reverence him and vice versa. He blesses us simply by being there. Hallelujah. The blessing is reciprocal. One invokes a blessing on himself by blessing God, Barach, as to kneel. And so now we know the posture and the mindset and the heart and the attitude and the demeanor that we are to bless God in. We are to Barach him, kneeling, amen. And sometimes that's in the natural, when we actually are kneeling in prayer, other times it's just within ourselves, within our spirit. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, when praises go up, blessings come down. Because we talk, we, we already said, you know, to, to bless him and then he blesses us in return. But I'm not talking about um, praise. That, that's a type of blessing too. That's a halal. Amen. But he said kneeling in adoration. He was very specific. Barach. Now, don't misunderstand me. Praise can be a part of adoration, and it is. Um, but adoration goes beyond praise. Adoration gets to the heart of who we are. To truly worship God and then to move on over into adoration, we must let go of our self-worship. Come out of self, our mind's not on ourself. All of that's left at the door, checked at the door. Our focus is on the Lord, and it's about Him. Hallelujah, we have to humble ourselves before God, surrender every part of our lives to his control and to adore him for who he is, not just for what he has done. That's thankfulness or even praise. We're talking about um, barocking God just simply for who he is, adore him with a purity of motive, amen, where we minister to him and we bless him. And God knows he's worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, you know, we might say something like, I adore you and worship you with everything, every fiber of my being. You're good in the good times and the bad times. Lord, I cast my crown at your feet. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. Righteous God, I honor you for the just for the glory of your name. Hallelujah. You're just ministering to him and blessing him. Or on the other hand, it may be something so simple as every time you think about it, you, 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 you whisper in your heart or you, you just say, you know, Lord, I adore you. But, you know, some of us may be saying, you know, well, I don't, I don't really feel, I don't feel that way. What if I'm not feeling it in that moment? Well, you're exercising that and you're moving toward that and, and you're working toward that. Hallelujah. You, you want it to be the truth. It's a confession. And so to those who say, you know, I don't really feel that many times. I say, you know, you shall have what you say. Say it until you mean it. Confess it. Keep, keep turning your spirit to the Lord and speaking those things that be not as if they were. Barach him, amen. And that kind of fellowship, that kind of heart toward him and, and blessing of him all day long, every time you think about it, where you're in communion with him, that breaks up follow ground fellow ground. Amen. He works with our hearts. The Bible says that God is the husbandman. He digs about. He fertilizes so that we can bear fruit. And so that as you, you're uh, blessing him and ministering to him and, and uh, uh, like a steeping in his presence, God is doing a, a work of the heart. The soil of one's heart becomes loam, which is a rich soil. And then for the planning of the word of God, out of which those prayers, out of which those petitions, and, and yes, um, everything that we're asking of him invokes a blessing. It bears fruit. 
Lord, we adore you. We barach you. Amen. Holy Spirit, teach us how to love God the way he wants to be loved, in a way that pleases him, in a way that blesses him, in a way that touches his heart. Glory to God. Isn't that what it's all about? He's so worthy. The Lord desires ad adoration, yet we are the ones who benefit. It's, I, I thought about how, you know, that old statement, you know, we can't be God giving. Here we are blessing him and we get something in return without even trying. It's the blessing of the Lord that ushers in his presence. It brings God on the scene. Amen. When we barack him, when we minister to him, when we bless him. It's like building your own ark of the Lord. Remember in 2 Samuel when King David uh, left the ark of the Lord in Obed-Edom's house? And because the presence of God was in the house, it dwelled in the ark. Because the presence of God was in the house, the Bible says the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. He blessed all that he had. The Lord blessed everything and everyone that belonged to him. Obed-Edom's whole life was, plagued, was, was blessed. Amen. Because the presence of God was there. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Well, now we have a new and better uh, covenant. Because in, in coming to a saving knowledge of Christ, we are born again of the spirit, of his spirit, which indwells us. Adoration in, invokes um, the presence and the glory of the Lord and, and the blessings which flow from his presence. And it's all because we're barocking him. It's a type of the ark of the Lord, the ark, the ark of his presence, amen, within us. Abide in me, he says. That, that constant, Lord, I adore you. Lord, I bless you. You're so worthy. That's an abiding. And he's abiding in us because as we barack him, he's blessing us right back. Amen. Abide in the vine. That's the vine life. Tap into him. He is the vine and we are the branches. Amen. Set up that ark of his presence through a lifestyle of adoration. Moving, moving beyond praise and loving him and blessing him the way he wants to be blessed. Ministering to him. And then from his presence, which is in you and I, then the Lord can manifest himself and you will have, you will have uh, answered prayer. You will have uh, direction because of his presence in the Barak and you will have his help. The ark of the Lord, the presence of God, was and is for the preservation, protection, and provision for God's loved ones. Beloved of God, if that's not a blessing, I, I don't know what is. His presence, God himself in control. May the God of truth and fidelity, the amen, bless me. Hallelujah. And as you and I simply barack him, we can't, we can't help but be blessed. As we adore him and honor him in our lives, as one who is reverence, as we love him, as he wants to be loved. Listen to what the Bible says about having a humble and surrendered heart like that means. John 14, 21 in the Amplified Version says, and we know the, the Bible says, if you love me, you know, obey my commandments. If you love me, obey me. John 14, 21 says, the person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love him and will show myself, reveal myself, manifest myself to him, the manifest presence of God. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. It's not just somebody between the pages of a book, but he's real to you. You're in relationship with him. You're, you're abiding with him and um, you you have his very heartbeat you're in tandem with him you you um, you hear his voice you know his voice and out of that adoration and love for him you you quick to obey amen all of that is about abiding 
and it comes out of that 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 Barach, that um, that blessing him, the God of truth and faithfulness to his promises, the Amen. Now the Amen is another name for Jesus. He's he's faithful to his promises. He's giving us strategic direction as we begin to walk out this year. You know, God can give you one word and take you through the whole year. And so, because the workman is first partaker of uh, his fruit, I am going to be standing on this word too. And just, I've been doing it already. God, I, I adore you. I wake up in the morning, I adore you. I just, I just want that to be out there first thing in the morning. And, you know, you begin to sense his pleasure. You do? You adore me? I mean, it's, just, it's a blessing. Sometimes we are, we are waiting for someone else to prophesy over our lives. Or we're waiting for someone else to pronounce a blessing over our lives. And, and there's a place for that in the body of Christ. This there sure is. And, you know, um, but our faith communities can assemble uh, together right now. The household of faith is coming together virtually, thank God. And, and truly, there is no distance in the spirit. A, a, a blessing can be pronounced um, over the phone or in a, in a church service, you know, that's being held uh, online. God can send and cast his word whenever and wherever and however he wants to. And, and, and we know that his word doesn't return to him void. Amen. But the word of the hour is invoke a blessing on yourself. And his word is truth. Glory to God. Pray his word from a place of adoration. The word and adoration, adoration and the word. May the God of truth and fidelity bless me. Pray the word, glory to God, and pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. He is the amen. He's faithful to his word, and we invoke a blessing on ourselves through the effective power of the word of the living God. Lord, you have exalted your name and promise above everything else. He's a promise keeper, and that my soul knoweth right well. God is faithful. All the promises of God are yea and amen, and it is so. Amen. Invoke a blessing on yourself, your family, your neighbors. Invoke a blessing on your community, your co-workers and colleagues. Invoke a blessing on our nation. Hallelujah. Oh, God, be sure it's spirit-led so that you, you're praying the will of God. But what all and all that you do, invoke that blessing. That's the word of the hour. Pray the answer, hallelujah, through the prayer of petition. Petition the Lord with the promises of his word that our scripture says he's so, so sure to honor and to stand by. Hallelujah. In, invoke a blessing on yourself as we begin to walk out the year of 2021 and move beyond the material. Move beyond stuff, houses and cars and, and jobs and clothing and move beyond that. It's not necessarily the blessings of God just be, uh, through stuff. God's blessings are meant to protect us, to guide us to the path of righteousness and to give us hope. Invoke a blessing on yourself. Pray for the call on your life. Pray, pray for your own ministries. Many of us have our own ministries that God is giving us. But the thing is, at least of all, at the least, you have a ministry within your home, within your neighborhood. Amen. Um, but pray for your ministries, both your home church where you, you, you've been called to, where God has set you, where God has planted you. And then again, uh, pray for the call and mission on your own ministries. Invoke a blessing on the souls uh, dealing with the, the fallout from COVID-19, the grief and the joblessness, the, the, the homelessness and the, the food insecurity. Hallelujah. The people of God are to speak into the atmosphere. Invoke a blessing. Invoke a blessing on those uh, dealing with symptomatic uh, symptoms of covid uh, the long haulers, as they call them. Invoke a blessing through prayer, a petition for others. Amen. Glory to God. Now, you may be saying, now, now, wait a minute, uh, prophet. As you said, the main course scripture is invoke a blessing on yourself. Which is it? Now you're saying invoke a blessing on others. 
Well, understand that petitioning the Lord with a pure motive on behalf of others is a blessing where you're workers together with God. Hallelujah. Speaking the word, praying the word, signs and wonders following the word, knowing that the Father of lights uh, from, who, from whom all blessings flow hears you from where? That place of adoration, that intimacy where you know his voice and he knows yours. Is that not a blessing? Hallelujah. And that's still in agreement with our scripture. It's still in, a, in agreement with our scripture. To petition God in prayer on the behalf of others speaks to the blessing of spiritual maturity and progress. Is that not a blessing on yourself? Where you're growing up in the things of God, where God can use you. There's nothing more satisfying and fulfilling. There's meaning to your life where you have power with God and you can be his eyes in the earth realm. You can be his ears, his hands. Hallelujah. Remember, your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly as you work together with him. When you take care of his business, he takes care of yours. And that's not just a, a cliche. There are things as you take care of God's business that you didn't even encounter. You didn't even know about it. God removed that thing before you even had to deal with it. You just walk right on past that. The, the enemy has set up something for you, some kind of trap, some kind of uh, uh, problem in your life, and you never even encountered it. God got rid of it. Glory to God, because you're walking with him. You, he's ordering your steps. He's directing your paths. You're abiding in him. He's abiding in you. Glory to God. Ah, God, I thank you. And I certainly pray um, that you receive this morsel of the meat of the word today and that you can chew on it, that he who would be blessed would invoke a blessing on himself and speak the word over himself through an attitude and a lifestyle of barach, of, of adoring God, of adoration. That's a really a beautiful way to start the new year off. Amen. And expect God to, there'll, there'll be increase with that. You know, as you go deeper and deeper in that, and it becomes easier and easier, it becomes a second nature, and you know that you mean it, and he knows that you mean it. Chew on that word, meditate on it, you know, and, and take what you can and receive it, amen? And, and some of it you may have to hold in abeyance, as they say, and put it on a shelf until, you know, you come to a place where you can receive it and, 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 and walk that thing out, amen, so that you can get what God has for you, so that you can be a... A pronounce a blessing on yourself and everyone in your realm because the presence of God is dwelling with you just as it did Obed-Edom. Amen. Lord, let your word run swiftly that you have sent us on today. And I do thank God for this word. Amen. It was tasty. It was a morsel. Amen. And it's the meat of the word that we're going to um, just enjoy and get everything out of it that we can. Amen. In closing, I'd like to say if you have, um, you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, or if you um, have a need for availing prayer, uh, type it in the comment box below, and a minister from Bethlehem Temple Church will contact you, amen, um, and expect to hear from them in Jesus' name. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God bless you.